Today I've got a Grundig TV to show. This is the first Grundig that I've put to camera and put onto YouTube. Grundig was a great German brand that put out some really nice TVs. This model here is the M95-795. The picture tube has 89 centimeters of visibility, so it is a very big CRT indeed. Uh, the reason that I went for this, apart from being so big, if you've seen my videos, I love chasing down these big CRTs, but the reason is because this is the last model that Grundig put out in 1996, I believe, that was not 100 hertz in its processing, picture processing. That feature was used in a lot of CRTs as time went on, but I think it's detrimental to the picture quality, especially for these old SCART RGB consoles. So this is the last one that had a regular 50 or 60 hertz refresh rate. Um, we'll have a look here at the front. Up close up, there's the Grundig badge, obviously. Over here on the left we have some buttons, power on off, headphone, volume up, down, channel up, down. Over here we have a nice little dot matrix display. I think this may have been the only model in the in the range of that year that incorporated this screen being the flagship basically they've gone to extra lengths this is a feature that Metz use which is another German manufacturer on a lot of their TVs this this little panel with some details of what the TV is doing there you'll notice it says Megatron monolith the monolith referring to this large set and Megatron is just sort of a play on words it was just a thing that TV manufacturers did Sony had their Trinitron tubes uh, a lot of other companies decided just to use this tron like high tron diamond tron grundig's gone for megatron here there's nothing really special about the tube inside it's in fact a toshiba tube grundig never manufactured their own tube so it's just a play on words funny thing that um, it's megatron you think hasbro might drop them a lawsuit using megatron it's name from the transformers and just coincidentally this is just a silly little thing i might just add here this here is the um, catalogue for Grundig that year, 1996, and um, you can see like a crocodile or an alligator coming out of the TV there. Well, I remember that in Beast Wars, Megatron um, actually had a form that was a crocodile or alligator, one of the two, so it's pretty, pretty sort of coincidental that we've got Megatron in the word form, in the visual form, in a sense. But anyway, we'll get back to the TV. Now, there's one thing I must point out. If you look over here on the bottom right corner, again, you've got monolith written there, but you see that big mark, that big white mark on the TV. I didn't notice that when I picked it up from the owner, but when I put it in the car and got it home and lifted it out, this mark came apparent to me. Now, a friend tells me that that's classic um, plastic stress that causes that, that sort of marking there. It looks like it's had a blowtorch ran up it and it's melted. Now, I don't believe it was there when I picked it up off the owner so it may have got damaged in my car I didn't have any cushioning unfortunately to put under it because um, this TV just it just came my way by chance and it was given to me but I didn't have anything to um, put under it as I put it face down the TV so I may have caused some damage to it there but fortunately it's still running fine we'll go and have a look around this beast of a thing here in the back <clears throat> we've got um, you know, you like to see that when you've got a triple SCART on the back. Uh, you've got also an S-Video with composite and left and right audio in. Down here you've got, there on the left, the two RCAs, your audio out left and right. Uh, this thing here, I don't know, I don't know what exactly it is. The Germans use a lot of this sort of satellite cards going back into RF. I'm not sure what that is, but it doesn't play any role in my setup here. Over here's the label. Again, there's the, the full name for the TV. Uh, here you'll see CUC7890. CUC always refers to the chassis inside the television circuit board that runs the show. Grundig, um, Grundig have a prolific amount of, of chassis, but they like to name, I think, every revision, every change with a different CUC number. So there's just a plethora of them floating around, but that's what this one is. I've got the um, I've got the back unscrewed, so it'll only take me a minute to take it off. Now that the back's off, back shell's off, we can see what's going on inside. <clears throat> As I said before, that 
This TV has a Toshiba tube in it, A89, 89 centimeters of visibility. When you get to this size, I think your um, range of tubes starts to diminish. There's fewer and fewer manufacturers, perhaps, that do these big ones. And this is the first Toshiba of this size that I've had. And Grundig used Toshiba a lot, and that's not a bad thing, because I think they are quite a good tube. Got your chassis down here. Can't really say anything much about the chassis here. I don't necessarily think the chassis are always that much bigger because you're running a bigger tube. Um, it's, you know, it's reasonably compact. It's got a bit of size to it, but it's not massive. The only thing that's really different, or well, the only couple of things that are really different, are these rails they've put in here. Must be some extra sort of strength supports there that um, they've placed there. Looks a bit like a, a frame that some arcade tubes use, but it's not not operating in the same way. Um, it's got some bloody big, bloody big plates there to um, hold it to to hold that tube in place. This actually has a timber floor or wood, I should say, wood floor, timber floor there, and the base that it is on is um, a plastic sort of plastic layer, which is, you know, taking up a few inches of extra space. You've got your tube that stops there at the bottom where that black core runs along, and then you've got this few inches down here. All that's really got um, in the way. All that really does is give a bit of room for that dot matrix display on the front. So, you know, a lot of extra sort of space taken up there for not much reason really, but that's okay. That's fine. So that's um that's pretty much it inside. We'll get now onto what it actually looks like. A couple other things I forgot to say. The weight on this thing is 81 kilos, which is not really that heavy for a TV of this size. Um, I've still got this big Mitsubishi CRT monitor which I did a review of very recently. That's the same tube size and it weighs 104 kilos compared to um, 81 kilos of the same size. There's a big difference there but obviously the Mitsubishi is loaded with metal and a lot of bells and whistles and things but not too heavy and apart from that it's actually fairly good to carry because you have this recess under here. This little um, platform bit, this little bit of extra, few extra inches of so-called wasted space that I said before actually is quite handy to be able to get your hand under there. And, and same with the back too, you've got area there to carry it, you get a friend on the other side and off you go wherever you like. Now the owner, um, the owner actually gave me this bar, now this is a proper Grundig item that came with the TV. This bar can actually screw in, see the, um, see the two holes there, this bar will screw in there and you can use it as a carry handle but unfortunately Leona couldn't find the other bar at the time so I've only got one for now but that shows you what else this TV does come with and speaking of what this TV does come with I've got the remote here it's a bit worn out just another one of your typical sort of Grundig Grundig remotes there um, I'm not actually using it because I think it's just worn out a bit too much I've just got another Grundig remote and I'm using that instead seems to work better I've got a test pattern up on the screen now. Don't worry about there not being any red um, visibility down the bottom there. You can see the sides and the top there is. That's not an issue in these circumstances. Um, it looks, um, yeah, it looks fairly straight. I mean, the, the the edges aren't perfectly straight there. I don't know if the camera really picks it up or not, but. Um, with a lot of these TVs, the older the TV, probably the more common this will be. And if any of you out there watching this have picked up a few old CRTs, you probably noticed this. But if I put it up close and just let the camera stay still, you can see you can see just a little bit of jitteriness. What I call jitteriness. See, it's a little bit wobbly, a little bit of uh, on the edges of those white bars. You can see a little bit of flickering with the blue and the red on the left. It's it's just something I think that happens to a lot of TVs as they get old. Maybe some capacitors are wearing out. Just, it just gives a little bit of a jittering effect, and I see it all the time. Probably just needs some caps replaced or something like that. But I don't think it's inherently a problem with the TV itself, bad design or anything like that. It's just age. Um, I guess, I don't know if I can pick this up, the, the white bars are sort of a little bit kinked there. They're generally all straight, but they, they just kick out to the left a little bit. I don't know if the camera picks up that or not, but... I had a Lerber that was similar, even probably worse than that, but it's probably not going to impact the end result too much because it's pretty straight overall. Um, this program I'm using actually, it's uh, I'm running the Dreamcast right now, Viscard RGB, and I'm using um, this fellow's program, Artemio's um, Test Suite, I think it's called. 
it's got a lot of useful bits and pieces. I think you can download this um, program and just burn it onto a CDR and put it in your Dreamcast and off you go. I don't think there's a cost or anything, but I'll just give him a shout out anyway and thank him for it. It's pretty handy. Uh, I think he's made it also as a Mega Drive. There's a Mega Drive Mega CD version. Um, it's got a lot of useful functions in it, so it was handy just to get that, that grid up. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll probably go into a game and, and we'll see how that um, how that looks. It's got a lot of useful things. That's like that CPS1, Capcom CPS1 color, color bars looks just the same as that. Anyhow, it's all looking good and we'll, we'll get into the game now. I've got Street Fighter Alpha 3 on the Sega Dreamcast running on the Grundig. When I first examined this TV, I was sitting up pretty close to it as I do here in the shed where I do reviews of these things. Um, I actually thought that the size of the of the CRT was too big and that the scan lines, the black scan lines were just too prominent. But now that I'm sitting a couple meters back, where you would be normally as playing this thing, um, it's looking pretty good actually. The scan lines aren't bothering me, the thickness of them. Um, the standout features on this set is probably the brightness and the colors. Uh, if you've seen one of my other reviews of a Lerva television, the Lerva Art, it's just as big as the Grundig here, another German model again. Uh, it's the 1994 model, and this Grundig's the 96, as I said also before, but um, the Grundig really takes the cake. It just, it's got the blacks, it's got the bright colours, brightness of picture. Uh, look, it really, it really looks good. I think the rule of thumb still holds that the bigger size you go in CRT, probably the worse your, worse your picture quality goes. I don't mean to say that um, too harshly. I mean, you go up in size, you get a little bit of little bit of um, picture quality quality lowering, but it's a trade-off that you just got to live with. But I think, I think I could see this big set going into the games room just for the sheer size of it, and yet the performance is still pretty good. I, there are a few little things that I could criticize about it, but um, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a good model. Now, you saw that it had three SCART sockets on the back. Now, two of them are enabled for RGB. So the Dreamcast in AV1, and then on AV2, I've got the Saturn running in RGB as well. So that's that's quite nice to have. And if you also notice, you can label the um, channel name. See, I've got AV2 set as RGB2. You could name that to Saturn if you wanted to. And then AV1 is RGB1. I'll be running a lot of consoles through a matrix switcher, so I won't name any of the channels consoles specifically. Um, I'm just going to show you some menu stuff, how to get into the service menu and wrap the review up, but my impression of it right now is quite good. Anyway, I'll show you these menus. So to get into the service menu, you need to push the information button on the remote. That'll bring up a menu, your standard menu. You'll notice that there it looks like a bit of faultiness going on there in the picture. For some reason, uh, these Grundig chassis do that. When there's a device plugged into the SCART socket and turned on, it makes this menu system a little bit faulty, but it's quite readable, so it's not a problem. You want to go down to Special Functions, and then you'll see the service option there. Highlight the service, press OK. Now you've got to enter the code to get into the service menu, and this code is... 8500 so 8500 type it in on the remote it, uh, when you type it in it won't highlight any numbers all you see is the cursor move across there on the dots I've already pressed 8 now I'll press 5 and then 0 and 0 again that's in I'm in I'm in the service menu I'll zoom out so here you go you got your options to change various things geometry is really the one that I'm after and then you got all your various adjustments you can make there you press OK and then it gets you back into your source which is Alpha 3 on the Dreamcast and you can just press up and down and go through the various things you want to change and then just press I to get back out here and when you're finished make sure you go down to terminate there and push across with memory so that'll save it, that'll terminate the menu with the adjustments you've made saved into the memory so that's all there is to the service menu, no problem at all. Here we are back onto 
normal viewing again. Um, but yeah, so basically to finish off the review, um, I do recommend this TV. It's rare to see it. I haven't seen it come up on eBay or Gumtree much. Just by coincidence though, um, this exact model at this time was on eBay in Sydney. Someone bought one for 30 bucks off there, which is really a bargain. Um, the winning bidder, I saw his history, it was on video game related items. So I think he obviously knew what he was getting into and he's got himself a good television. So keep an eye out for this big Grundy. One of my, um, probably one of the best ones I could recommend just for the size and um, picture quality combination. So thanks for watching and um, I'll try and come up with some more stuff for you next time. See ya.